Hello, 22 Tony here with my latest discussion on collecting vintage and antique ammo. Today I'd like to talk about the Peters Cartridge Company. The early history of Peters is uh, probably some of the most exciting information you'll find of, about the early manufacturing of cartridges. Um, I'm just going to talk about it very briefly today. We're not going to get into a lot of details, but I do encourage you to do a little bit of research and look into it on your own. Um, See, that's pretty interesting how some of the larger manufacturers really tried to choke Peters out in the early days. But we're not going to really get into that today. Today, again, we're just going to go into a real brief history and, you know, hopefully spark your interest a little bit. Well, the Peters Cartridge Company was uh, created in 1887, and they began at that time producing shotgun shells. They were pretty successful, and around 1895, they began producing 22s. Now those early 22 cartridges uh, were packaged in two-piece boxes. They looked pretty similar to the other manufacturers at the time. And uh, initially, there wasn't a, a lot of difference uh, you know, in any of the manufacturers. But towards the end of the 1800s, uh, you know, shortly after they started producing 22s, they caught the interest of Harry Pope. Now, Harry Pope worked for Stevens, and uh, he produced barrel rifling. He was uh, probably one of the most important names in early target shooting. He made the finest rifling and the finest barrels. But Harry Pope wasn't happy with the performance of the larger manufacturer's 22 offerings. And he came to Peters and uh, worked with them to come up with a, a better quality a target grade 22. Around uh, 1904, the Peters Stevens Pope cartridge was introduced. And that was designed specifically for target shooting and really gave Peters their name at that time. Like I mentioned, those early boxes were the, the traditional two-piece boxes. The other manufacturers were all very similar, a two-piece box with a label on top, uh, usually just one colored printing on a colored label. Well, in the uh, late teens or around 1920, Peters came up with their multicolored boxes. Um, at that point, I think they were by far the most attractive boxes in the uh, ammunition industry. They caught your attention. Peters was proud of their uh, their offerings and they showed it in their in their offerings, in the boxings. Then sometime uh, around 1928 they introduced this box. I, I'm not sure what the thinking was, why they downgraded, as far as I'm concerned, downgraded. Um, not nearly as colorful, not uh, I don't think nearly as attractive a packaging but um, this particular box, this particular design, ran up until uh, really about 1948. Now there were a lot of overlaps in Peters, and, and that's what makes it exciting for a, a collector to look into the history and, and where those overlaps were, but again this uh, particular packaging ran for oh, really uh, close to 20 years. Now the interesting thing about this particular packaging is the, the back design on it. Um, the flaps in the back changed many, many times over those years. There's uh, literally hundreds, and it wouldn't surprise me if there were a thousand different variations of this particular box. The front looks basically the same with different backs, and again, there are hundreds minimum uh, different variations of that particular box. So you could build an entire collection out of just this. Well, um, moving forward a little bit, around 1934, this uh, kind of a silverish color box was introduced and uh, that's the high velocity film coat. So when they came up with the film coat instead of the rustless label they did change the design and, and they overlapped again for uh, quite a few years. Now before I go too much further I, I want to talk about a little bit of a dilemma for the Peters collector. In 1934 Peters was actually purchased by Remington. So where the dilemma comes in at 1934, if you're a Peters collector, do you quit collecting Peters ammo? Well, personally, I say no. They, they were, um, the, the Peters name was very important and, and the quality was there and Remington recognized that, that's why they bought them. And they continued with the, the Peters name for, again, many years, they, they continued producing both Remington and Peters. So to me, I would continue collecting the Peters, you know, into the 1970s. Uh, the Peters name was still very prominent in the ammunition world. And that uh, brings me to this particular box right here. This is called the Antique Series. 
these were introduced initially in 1977 as just a promotional offering. But they were so popular, they were reintroduced in 1978 and they ran into the 1980s. And that's actually the last regular production box with the Peter's name on it that was produced. Now there were a few boxes later with the Peter's name uh, solely for the purpose of keeping the Peter's trademark alive, but as far as regular production, um, the antique series was the last boxes made. Now I did want to show you uh, the back here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and uh, here's a 1930s Peter's. These are uh, actually uh, 22 Winchester automatics and it shows you here that it's Peter's cartridge division of Remington. And uh, you can also see it here on this early film coat. I hope the plastic doesn't prevent you from seeing it. But again, we're looking at Peter's cartridge division instead of the Peter's cartridge company. Um, again, I don't actually have one here that says Peter's cartridge, cartridge company. And uh, again, that's for a, a future video when I do my uh, two-piece boxes. That's coming up here probably shortly. So anyway, I, I didn't go into a huge amount of detail. It, it uh, Like I said, I, I think the early history of Peter's is, is fascinating and it will give you hours of research before you even start collecting. And I think that's one of the, the thrills to me of why I collect, is I, I learn things that I never knew and, and really had no reason to know. But, uh, you know, the little bit of time that I took researching Peter's for this video, I, I found out some very interesting information and uh, when I'm done with the video, I'm going to go back and finish the reading that I started. So as always with my videos, they're, uh, they're not designed to be an in-depth study. They are designed to give you something to think about and hopefully encourage you to start your own collection. I hope I've achieved that today. I hope you like my video. I hope you watch the other ones and uh, subscribe and, and please share. Um, I'd like to get the word out to more people on the fascination of collecting vintage and antique ammo. Thanks for watching. As always, have a good day.